just to, now we move on to, um, you know, one of the interesting things is we moved from the brain to humanity, now to uh, some aspects of the computational universe that we're creating. And, uh, and of course, a key part of that is, is how we see how computation is, when it moves into new fields and in, in, uh, has been doing these profound transformations to them. And so creating effective infrastructure and methodologies where computing can have its most um, effective engagement with a field like neuroscience is one of the things that Suba Sivanaman is uh, working with at the San Diego Supercomputer Center. So, Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Subha Sivanyanam. I'm from the San Diego Supercomputer Center, and my talk today is about the Neuroscience Gateway, which is an NSF-funded collaborative research project between the San Diego Supercomputer Center, uh, uh, Neuroinformatics Framework, and the Yale School of Medicine. Amit Majumdar is the PI of this project, and Marianne Martone is the co-PI from the UCSD. And uh, from the Yale School of Medicine, uh, Ted Carnevale, who's also the co-developer of the Neuron Simulation Tool, is the PI. There's been a tremendous growth in the computational modeling in the neuroscience field, and that's fairly evident by an increase in the number of modeling papers, and also some new journals on computation. Just the software Neuron was cited over 1,300 times by the end of last year, seeing a 10% growth. Uh, annually. And this trend is not just in publications. Even in proposals, uh, modeling now plays a very important part. And it's very common now to see the, from the proposals from a traditional experimentalist, they include modeling as a part of the proposal. And all this has sort of driven um, a refinement and an evolution of the existing computational neuroscience tools to be run on parallel computers. And some run on GPUs too. And um, in the high-performance computing world, supercomputers are now moving from tens to hundreds of teraflops towards petaflops, and soon in the future, exaflops. And all these big machines have you know, faster speed. Um, they all have massive parallel file systems. There's now next-generation data technologies available for data analysis. Um, there's some uh, workflow tools available. And all this is actually um, combined, they call the cyber infrastructure. And SDSC has, been, uh, has a long history of enabling cyber infrastructure for various domain science. And we wanted to do that for neuroscience, too. But it, all this is not without challenges. Um, most modeling projects start small. And many are forced to stay small in labs because of no access to high-performance computing resources. But that doesn't mean that there's no rapid growth or development of, you know, um, of a modeling project. And we see that there are more parameter sweep studies um, and complex neuronal model simulations being created, which require high performance computing and cyber infrastructure. Unfortunately, only very few neuroscientists actually have access to large high performance computing clusters. Because there are certain barriers of entry to the high performance computing world. When to get a time on a supercomputer, one has to write an allocation proposal which gets peer reviewed, which means you may or may not get the resource that you want. And plus, a user also has to understand all the complexities um, that uh, you, know, you have to understand the operating underlying operating system, how do you submit a job on the supercomputer, how do you store your results, how do you move the data. And this could be a very daunting task for a beginner or someone who's just entering into the uh, computational modeling field. What we wanted to do was to hide all these complexities and just provide a simple web-based portal where a neuroscientist can just upload their model, run the simulation, and get their output result. And we will sort of do all the um, high, I mean, do all the complex work underneath, which is like getting um, an allocation on the supercomputer, um, installing all the software tools, work with the developers and install the tools optimally, um, uh, get all the job submission environments set, and then all the data transfer. So from a user point of view, it would be just, you know, they log in, they see a simple web page, there's a page to upload their model, and they click a button, it runs, and they get the output result. And we did not 
do this from scratch. You know, we took the framework of a uh, very successful gateway for phylogenetics community called the Cypress, and we adapted that code for neuroscience community, and this was viewed very positively by NSF. And what you see now is just a screenshot of our portal, and this is just listing all the, soft, all the tools that we provide currently. Um, and as you can see, this is just um, a simple page where this is exactly what a user will see. You know, they can upload a model, they'll select a tool, and they will run their, um, um, their simulation. So we've been in production since the January of 2013, and we have about 120 registered users. And uh, in the first six months, uh, our users used about 300,000 core hours um, on the supercomputers. And so we had to write another proposal asking for more time and through the Exceed, which is, which is like an umbrella organization of all the NSF supercomputers, supercomputer centers. And we, we got 1.6 million hours to, to be used this year. And our user needs are also very diverse. I mean, we have users who just have a single core job. To there are users who run parameter sweep studies. And we have a user who's even requesting whether they could run on a 4,000 core machine. Um, so what we are doing now is we're constantly talking to users first to identify with their needs and also to see how we can help them achieve their research goals faster. So the goal, I mean, the goal of this you know, particular meeting for us at least is to get the word out about the NSG to make the campus aware of this resource which is available for free for all any neuroscientists. And also to see if, uh, you know, if there's any potential for collaboration so that you know, we, we want to identify um, different use cases so that you know, we can either modify neuro the neuroscience gateway to fit their research needs and also to help them achieve their results faster with cyber infrastructure. Another angle is that you know, the Japan's K computer contacted us to see if we have any users who have a big enough problem to be run on their computer. So this is another angle that we can facilitate this collaboration too. Um, and with that, I will um, end my talk. And I just want to say thanks to all our collaborators and the wonderful folks at SDSC Next Seat. Thank you. Questions? Up here, Sandra Brown. Thank you, that was a wonderful talk. I wonder if you might share for us an example of uh, a neuroscience-based request that has been run through your system to exemplify the work that you do. Anything, uh, an example of a model? Sure, um, we have a user, um, Tim Rumble. He's from Mount Sinai, um, and he's studying the um, cognitive decline of you know, aging monkeys. And what he, ne what he needs is, when before this, he was just running on his um, lab cluster, which was very small, and um, he's a postdoc. And after coming to us, and because he saw that he didn't have to worry about you know, installing the, he was using a neuron, which is a tool, and um, he, he had a lot of difficulties. Initially, he tried to get an allocation on a supercomputer independently and wanted to install and study it. But um, he was not able to do that successfully, and that's why he came to us. And now, ever since he started using this, he has now two publications, and he, he was able, he's now able to expand. He's able to, his code now runs on 256 cores, and he started out with four cores. And, and he, told, he wrote us a very nice note saying, you know, how this has impacted his own career because now he's able to progress faster. And, uh, and I guess that's, that's one example. Just as a practical question for, from a potential user, what percent of your proposals are you able to uh, support? Uh, when I send in a grant to NIH, of course, the, the pay line, the, the percent of grants that get funded is now quite low. Uh, I'm curious to know how many of the proposals that you receive can be supported. Um, I'm not sure if I understand your question right. If, if they, the resources are, what we provide is entirely free for academic researchers. There's, um, 
that's great. That's fantastic. But I thought I understood that you don't, you're, n you're not able to run all proposed projects. Is that, is, maybe, I, maybe I misunderstood. If, if you, you're able to support all applicants who apply to you. Yes, we are. Uh -huh. We're Wonderful. able to support all applicants great, who apply to great. us. Great, Terrific. Um, I'm, I'm from SDSC, so I think what she's referring to, the question that you're asking might be about, there is a national allocation process. So there's a national set of supercomputers and national set of users, and that's a competitive process. <clears throat> so another way you can think about the neuroscience gateway is they have done the hard work of getting allocations on the systems, and now the rest of the community can simply run their experiments without having to do that. The rest of the community, at least so far, they're not yet overwhelmed, so they can support all that community. If they get overwhelmed, then like NCAR, you might want to get a separate computer just for the brain. Thank you. Thank you, Jaitan.